pleased to be here again on another Lord's Day. And certainly, it's always our pleasure to have visitors with us in the assembly. Amen. And today is no exception. Amen. We uh, uh, if you come back, I mean, if you enjoy, if you enjoy being with us today, uh, come back and be with us again. Bring Amen. someone Amen. at you. Amen. Uh, if you don't enjoy, let us know. Amen. And, uh, we uh, just excited to, to kick off a gospel meeting today, and want everybody that uh, you know. The meeting has been advertised, so they certainly hope we have a, a decent turnout. <coughs> if you look with us on Facebook, we certainly ask that you come and be with us if you're in the area, and, and we are always glad to have uh, have you with us, whether you're on Facebook or whether you're here in person. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we prefer to be here with us in person. Amen. I'm going to ask you to silence your electronic devices this morning so that they do not disturb the worship service. And I'm going to read for you from uh, 100 Son. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Yeah. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. May God bless those who hear uh, read his words. Repeat after me, please. Uh, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth. Let the words of my mouth. And the meditations of my heart. And the meditations of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. Be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord. O Lord. My rock. My rock. Redeemer. And my Redeemer. Is there anyone to make confession at this time? Good morning, brothers and sisters. I sinned against God and man, and I am repenting of those sins. I forsake the assemble, and the Bible tells me they will repent. So I do stir up the righteous to praise him that I become a better Christian today than I was yesterday. Amen. 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 All right, thank you, Sister Carlisle. And, uh, person that comes up to do the prayer will pray for you. Yeah. Now this time we continue with the singing. Yeah. Let's go to page 70, 76 in the blue book. Page 76. Page 76, Heavenly Sunlight. Heavenly Sunlight.
page three, four to six. <coughs> Everybody, were you happy over there? Yes, yes. Everybody happy? There's a There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond, where the Savior brings us to the glory. Yeah. 
the church. Say amen again. Amen. You love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. Say amen again. Amen. Our scripture this morning will be taken from uh, Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 4. And it will be read from the uh, the Holy Bible. That's Genesis 12. 1 through 4. And it reads, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of uh, thy country, and from thy king, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shoot you. Shoot thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee. And in uh, thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Yes. So Abram departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Then may God add a blessing to all of those who fear and obey his word. Yeah. 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 Let us pray. O oh, gracious and heavenly Father, we stand before you this morning. O oh, heavenly Father, give you all honor and glory. And thank you, O oh, heavenly Father, for allowing us to rise and see a day in which we've never seen before. Amen. And as we looked around, Father, and we come within our mind and realize, Father, we're still here. Mm -hmm. And before us, Father, you have broken to us the bread in which we enjoy, and then, Father, the meat. And, and Father, we just thank you so much for the food. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for health and strength. But, Father, there are so many that are suffering, Father, yes. not able to stand, not, not even able to eat of their own. Yes. There are some, Father, that requesting prayer this morning, Sister Brewster and Sister Hook yes. and Brother Mitchell's daughter. Mm -hmm. And, Father, we pray for the Whitsons, the Sawyers, and the Samsons. The Dismore, the Mallory's, Brother White and his wife also is sick, and Elton family. Yeah. Now, Father, now we pray for those that are bereaved, that you will comfort them, Father, and give them the, that which they need, Father, that they can get through a day realizing they have lost a loved one. Yeah. We pray for the Adams family, the Lambert family, the Stamps family, the Woods family, and Father, just continue to bless them throughout the week as they go forth to continue to do their lives. Mm -hmm. But Father, we thank you so far, so 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 much this morning, and so far, our manservant has come before us this morning to break out to the bread of life. Mm -hmm. You have brought him before our present Father with safety in him and his wife, and we're grateful to have him here. Mm -hmm. and Father, we pray that we do what we can to help him and make his stay comfortable. And Father, knowing that he had come to preach the gospel to those that are lost, not only are lost, but there may be some in the church as well yeah. that's not doing what they should be doing. Yeah. And Father, we pray that they will do better at this weekend. Amen. So with our young ones, our children, continue to bless them, Father. Let us lead them in the way, Father, that you will be happy in their presence, Father, and doing their will and their concern about their lives. Yes. Go with all of us, Father. Continue yes. to bless us. And bless the minister here also. And stand by him and his wife as they travel up and down the road. Yeah. Go with us now, Father. Prepare our minds to receive your engrafted word. Which is able, Father, to save our soul. Yeah. Yeah. And give us comfort in the end as we have found place. Thank you so much, Father, for thy son, Jesus Christ. In this name we pray. Let us all say, Amen. Amen.
We may worship God in spirit and in truth. It is our prayer that you came with the intentions of worshiping God because God is an awesome God. We greet you this morning in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We're thankful that we can open up our Biblos and turn to Acts 17, verse number 28, for we barely find it is because of him that we live, move, and have our own being. Yeah. As we give honor to the Father, we must also honor the Son. For the Bible says, greater love than no man than this, that a man lay down his life for yeah. his friend. Amen. He says, you are my friend, if you yeah. do whatsoever, I command you. As we honor the Father and the Son, we must also recognize the Holy Spirit. We know that all scripture has been given by the inspiration of God, but that's not where I want to go. I want to go to 2 Peter chapter 1 and verses number 3. But Peter writes, he's given unto us all things pertaining to life and God. I believe that the Lord has said it, that settles it, and that should conclude it for you and me. Amen. Certainly we bring you greetings from the Blue Spring Road Church of Christ, located at 2150 Blue Spring Road in Huntsville, Alabama. We're thankful that you have the capability of just inviting a poor, humble preacher. <laughs> come to your great city yeah. and try to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, no one told me my time limit, and I don't see a clock on the wall. <laughs> I know to tell people that I'm a long winded preacher, but I try to keep within the time frame of the congregation. Uh, what I like for people to try to do is uh, don't tell me uh, at the last minute. That you know you've gone overgone your time. <laughs> and I try to stay within the time frame. Yeah. But if I it's getting good to me, I may just stay and preach it all. Man. I want to introduce this morning the lesson to you for the series of the week. I really I like to do series these days more than just a search. I do have some sermon in, but I try not to preach a sermon in. Because I believe that people ought to have the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I believe that people should be able to see a story as it is written within the word of God. I'm just trying to be careful. Certainly we're thankful that my wife is with us this week. And uh, this day rather. Because uh, we'll be in and out uh, this week. We have two deaths within the congregation on Friday. And so, but I, I obligated myself to you all to so come back tonight and uh, sit down with the family. So if there's something that you have something for me to do in the course of the week, please do not hesitate to ask and inform because we do intend to do God's will. Amen. And we would rather do what the congregation asks of us to do than try to just come and just preach the word of God. I'm, I'm a minister. I'm a servant. I'm an evangelist. I try to carry out what the Lord has placed upon us to do. So as we greet you this morning, we're thankful that we get an opportunity to see some people from Jasper, Alabama. Yes, sir. Is here with us. Darwin and Ben was with us when he preached there in Jasper. Some 30 some odd years ago. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not telling my age. I'm full of 60. I'm full of 60. I'm proud God let me be 60. We left Jasper and went to Starkville, Mississippi. Left Starkville, Mississippi. Ended up in Tuskegee, Alabama. Left Tuskegee and now we in Huntsville, Alabama. I, I tell folks, people always want to know how long you've been in Huntsville. I say 14 but the July the 5th, it'll be 15. Amen. Yeah. So keep us in prayer. Keep Sister Rogers in prayer because it's hard for her because Lord don't act right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just being honest with you. Lord don't act right. Amen. So if Lord don't act right, she, she has to try extra hard to make sure that I do the right thing for health's sake. I put it like that. Yeah. This morning, as we go into our state, the subject at hand is answering the call 
when God calls. Amen. I want you to see that it's about obeying God yes. and acknowledging God and his love. Yes. It's about acknowledging the fact that God is a long-suffering God, that God is a loyal to God. Yeah. It's about knowing that we need to know our God in heaven. Mm -hmm. I come to realize that there are many people in the world that really do not know God. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I come to see that over the years that even in the church, there are many that really do not know God yes, sir. in the church. We come to the assembly, but that does not mean that we listen while we're here. Yes, sir. So many things take place while we're in the assembly that sometimes we get so distracted that we forget that we need to be paying attention yes. to what's actually happening and taking place. Amen. So therefore, over the years, I've seen where many really do not know the God of heaven. And when people do not know the very God of heaven, we have to try to enlighten them to know the God of heaven so that they can get to know uh, the God of heaven. So as we talk about this, it's about really seeing the importance of knowing our God. Amen. And we get to the point of knowing our God. We want us to also, now God, uh, we may have some issues. It may be some batteries. Uh, she really doesn't want to work with me. I say, I say she because I know how that woman that God gave me. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> you know, I tell people after 39 years, yeah. I basically can say what I want to say. Go ahead. <laughs> and if, and if uh, she gets upset with me, we just, we just pray together. <laughs> I do a lot of counseling, so I, I tell folks, I don't mind taking the wrong. I don't yeah. mind getting down on my knee. Amen. And uh, let me go on and put this out here. <laughs> Brother and Sister Rogers are not in the vision that fake. Okay? Yes, sir. Right. If you see us and she's looking one way and I'm looking one other way, yeah. that means she's mad. <laughs> <laughs> that means that I'm going to have to take the low road and I'm going to have to make things right in order to make heaven our home. <laughs> so I tell men when they come to counsel, learn how. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When she say, text me. <laughs> learn how to lay your head in their lap. <laughs> if that don't work, then lay your head on their back. Uh -huh. And you just start praying. Yeah. Prayer does something. Yes, sir. Prayer will change her entire attitude yeah. and change yours as well. Yes, right. Man. And if you pray long enough, she'll say, okay, you are forgiven. <laughs> and why y'all looking? <laughs> <laughs> Let me go to work this <laughs> The call will bless you. And I want you to see this week, as we talk about the gospel call, the call will, will bless you. I want to show you the call between Abram and God. I want you to appreciate what God shows us with this call. I need for us to understand the call not only will bless you, but the call will also bless those that are connected to you. Amen. Right? Because when you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, you become a changed person. Now, let me tell you something right off the bat. That does not mean as soon as you come up out of that water that you're going to speak right, that you're going to think right, and that you're going to have the attitude to be right. It's a process that must take place. That's the reason I threw it out this morning because the process must take place in our mind. If we never work on our mind, then our actions, our attitudes will never be right. If it never works on the if we never work on the mind, then our speech will never be right. Yeah. So we got to fix the mind in order to make sure that we connect with the great God of heaven. Yeah. So the call can not only bless you and those that are connected to you, but the call can and will influence your eternal destination. That's right, brother. Uh, so therefore, this morning, as we go into this, I want us to really see and appreciate the call that is before us. 
I want us to see in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4, and we read for you here. Do y'all mind if I look at it one more time? Sorry, sir. Let me go off and put here. The Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abel, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kingdom, and from thy father's house, into a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And I will make your name great. And shall and thou shalt be a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I will bless them that bless thee. Mm -hmm. And curse him that curses thee. Mm -hmm. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Mm -hmm. So Abram departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. Mm -hmm. And Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old mm -hmm. when he departed out of Iran. That he go back. And if we can all agree, then we can go off into our study. When you look at this text, we see here in Genesis 12, God makes a call to a man that did not know him. So many in the world, even though we have these smartphones, even though we are educated, still there are many that really do not know God. We assemble on the Lord's Day, the first day of the week, and we come together to worship God, and, 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 and as we worship God, we have to understand that it was Jesus that said that God is a spirit. Yeah. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. But we have to also keep in remembrance that God seeks individuals to worship him. Yeah. So as we come together, it's about really knowing God and really connecting with God. But there is no connection to God if we are not in Christ Jesus. Right. Paul, Paul writes to the church in Corinth. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse number 17, he said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Amen. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It's about being in Christ. Amen. So we've got to help people to understand that it's about coming out of the world and being into a particular place. Because God chose Abram to come out from his kindred to lead his kindred and go to a place where he has prepared for him. He's 75 years of age and God is calling him to go to a different place. But then we will find out that there is a great famine that is about to yeah. take place into this land. Yeah. Abram finds himself in a place where there is a famine that is so great. He goes to a place well, God didn't necessarily tell him to go, but watch as God opens the door for him and bless him. Yeah. He goes to Egypt. Yeah. And he stays in Egypt. But because his wife is so beautiful, uh, yeah. he knows the attitude of the people. Yes, sir. He says, when we get here, don't tell them that you are my wife. Right. Tell them that you are my sister. Uh -huh. Because if they know that you are my wife, yeah. they'll probably end up killing me yes, yeah. just for you. <laughs> Look at the attitude of the people. Look at what Abram already knew about individuals. Yeah. When we see this, we have to understand that this world that we're living in is such a wretched world. Yeah. People don't love one another. Uh -huh. We know that Jesus gave a new commandment that we should love one another as Jesus, as he has loved us. Yeah. The point is to look past an individual's thoughts, yeah. to look past an individual's lifestyle, and to save an individual where they are right now. Yeah. You've got to help try to save an individual where they are. Can I really say something to you this morning? I know you're going to get mad about it, but I need to go on and tell the truth this morning. Since this world is so weak, and so many things are transpiring, 
We have young men that want to be young ladies. Yes, sir. Yeah. We have young ladies that want to be young men. Yeah. Do you not know they still need to be saved? Yes, sir. And I, when I say that we have to save them where they are, yes, sir. even in the midst of this attitude, we still have a responsibility yes. to save yes. them where they are. Yes. It's one thing to go to the jail and, 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 and help an individual, a teaching right. individual, and, and save an individual back because we understand that right there he needs this help. And right there right. he right. needs the gospel because right there he needs God in his life. Yes. But do you not think that young male, that young female also need the Lord in their life yes. even though yes. they're fighting with who they are. Yes. They're fighting with who they are. Let me see. I, 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 I'm a, I grew up in 64. It, it, can anybody say here the, the, the day that you grew up in the 60s? Oh, yeah. uh, so you understand that we didn't have that type of attitude, right? Right. But since we didn't have that type of attitude, we're looking at another generation. Yeah. And so those generations are right here in the midst of the Lord's house. And since they're right here in the midst of the Lord's house, we have an obligation to help them, yeah. not criticize them. Right. We have an opportunity to aid them and not run them away. Yeah. We have an opportunity to minister to them yeah. and not just push them to the point where yeah. they never enter into the doors of God's house anymore. Right. We know that judgment must stop at the house of God. Yes, but at God. the same time, God's people must stand up for what is right and yes. have a compassionate heart. Let me, I, I really want to work right here just for a moment, but I got to get in this lesson. Yes. But we've got to be kind yes. and tender heart. Yes. In order to be kind mm -hmm. and tender heart, it's about learning how to listen. Yeah. Even when we don't agree, yeah. it's about learning how to pay attention, yeah. even when we know that we need to turn their attention somewhere else. Yeah. But we've got to get where they are in order to save them, because if we don't get them where they are, they will never enter into the door, and we will not have the opportunity to teach them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We looked at a lesson this morning that's dealing with immorality. But do you not know the world is filled with immorality? And you can't run from that. And if the world is filled with immorality, you might as well pack your bag and understand that they're right here in God's house as well. Because people are dealing with people issues and this is a people problem. And if it's not a people problem, then something is wrong with me. Because when I turn my Bible over to 1 John chapter 2, when the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, but all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of your eyes, and the pride of life. Old lady told me, she said, Brother Rogers, I don't have those sins no more. I said, ma'am, as long as you're on this side of life, yeah. you may not be battling with the lust of the flesh. Yeah. But I think you're still battling with the lust of your eyes. Yeah. Because you see that chocolate cake and it sure looks good. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you already know that you don't need that chocolate cake because you're battling with your diabetes. Yeah. But you still want it. But I understand if you don't want to agree with that, I work on the, on the third one, the pride of life. Yeah. You look at your children and you say, you know what? I reared these children. I raised these children the best that I can. I've got one that used to be a physician and now he's resting in his resting place. Are you not filled with pride when you say, I, I got one that was a physician and now they've gone to their resting place? Yeah. It's about all how you say it and all how you present. Yeah. So don't tell me we are not wrestling up in here yeah. with some sins of our own. Yeah. Uh, just because you come up in here making you wear a halo don't really mean that you got a halo. Somebody out there me, bro. Because the problem is we don't like to think about it, but we need to come to reality. Because sometimes we think things that we ain't got no business saying. Sometimes we even say stuff we ain't got no business saying. Sometimes we find ourselves doing something that we don't have any business doing. So don't tell me that all of us up in here are so holier than that. I understand. Peter said, be ye holy, though the Lord is holy. We are working to get to perfection. And, and, and as we work to get to perfection, we're going to battle on this side of life with some ups and downs 
in life. We all are faced with different challenges every day. Whether it's the lust of the flesh, the lust of our eyes, or the pride of life. So don't tell me we don't have this problem. I know we got this problem, but I got to get back to this call. The call. The call is an opportunity to follow the Lord. I actually reject the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. The call is, is an opportunity to say yes to God. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say no to God. Amen. The call, the call, the call that is before you is, is how you answer and how you demonstrate and how you put your priorities in the right place. Uh -huh. yeah. Let me tell you something. At 2150 Blue Spring Road, yeah. I've been working on priorities. The whole 14 years yeah. I've been there. Don't tell me we don't have an issue with setting our priorities in line. Right. We have an 8 o'clock service mm -hmm. because people get tickets to go to the Tennessee Titans game. Yeah. I go to Atlanta to the game. There's no need of me trying to fuss and fight with you to get you to stay to the 10.30 lesson. Yeah. Because if people want to go to Atlanta, if people want to go to Tennessee, guess what's going to happen? Yeah. They're going to go. Yeah. They say they work all week and they deserve to have some time to have some recreation. Somebody ought to come on over here. Yeah. Yeah. We try to make folks stay in the church. You can't make nobody stay in a church. As a matter of fact, the Bible says in Hebrews 10, Floyd, Floyd, go to your lesson. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. In Hebrews 10, beginning in verses number 24, the Bible says we ought to provoke one another to love and good works. Not to forsake in the assembly of ourselves together as a matter of some here. You gotta provoke one another to love and to good works. We gotta make sure that we reach out one to the other. Now so I say that to say this, in setting priorities in line, it's about reaching out to members. I tell our elders sometimes, you know, you don't come to the assembly and all of a sudden you're an elder. Yeah. You're supposed to be a shepherd Amen. all the time. Yeah. So a shepherd all the time understands that my ability, my, my goal is to serve the people in the church. That means I've got to pick up the phone. That means i got to get my keys and i got to go over to this house, to that house, to this house, and to that house to check on my brothers and my sisters. Because if not, flock gets scattered real easily. Because the sheep, don't get mad with me. A sheep, don't, don't, don't roll your eyes at me, okay? Yeah. Because the sheep get to eat it, and the only thing they have is tunnel vision. Uh -huh. They go straight in that line. Mm -hmm. When a sheep gets so busy in life, the only thing they see, the only thing they know is what they're doing right now. Yeah. That's the way we behave in the world. Yeah. Yeah. We're so busy trying to accumulate things mm -hmm. that we forget that things will make us leave lose our eternal life. Yeah. So we've got to encourage one another to see our, your responsibility is to put the Lord first yeah. in every aspect of our life. Jesus yeah. says in Matthew 6 and verses number 33, but see ye first yeah. the kingdom of God and his righteousness yeah. and all of these things shall be added unto you. Colossians chapter 1 and verses number 18. We understand that the church is the body and the body is the church. But did you get the fact that he died that he might have the preeminence in our life? Jesus died to be first in our life. And the only way for that to happen is got to start with the man. We've got to help people to see what needs to be first in your life. And if it's not seen in the eldership, if it's not seen in the preacher, if it's not seen in the deacon, then the members will say, we don't have an example that we can follow. So we've got to make sure that we present that example. Oh, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess I need to go on and tell you. Since I should have said this from the jump. 
I've been trying to get over him for the last three to four years. <laughs> COVID came to me. Yeah. The pandemic did. Yeah. Then last year when I was supposed to come, I had to come. Yeah. So I couldn't get over here. So all of these sermons I've been trying and wanted to come over here preach. <laughs> so, so when I get into this lesson, I'm, I'm knowing this is just matter of fact, this is an introduction to the series that I have. This is an introduction. This is nowhere near the lesson, all right? This is just an introduction to get to where I want to be. So, so if we go off into this introduction, I make my apologies to you for not being able to get here. But at the same time, don't think. I actually came for a check. I say that because what things I'm going to work on this week, you know what I'm saying? Somebody may decide they don't want to write me a check. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Yeah. I don't preach for a check. Amen. Amen. I preach for a God. Amen. I said, I've been channeled on a thousand Amen. years. Amen. If you don't understand that, he said the silver yeah, sir. and the gold yeah. belong to him. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't understand that, then those greenbacks belong to him too. Yeah. If you don't understand that, that quarter that you're trying to hide, yeah. it belongs to him. Yeah. Yeah. Even that little penny that you know you how you how you save them, yeah. and all of a sudden take them down into the bank, all of them belong to you too. Yeah. 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 You don't understand. You get mad with that. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna still betray the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Abram's call, as well as our call. Yes, sir. Produces blessings. Yes. Understand something, church. The gospel is God's power yes. to save mm -hmm. the souls of mankind. That's right. God wanted Abram to get away from his people so he could straighten out his mind. Yes. Let me show you something. God told Abram to look into the stars, to see if he could count the stars. Yeah. He said, if you can count, and you'll be able to count your generation. Yeah. But Abraham couldn't count. No, sir. He couldn't count because he knew that we looked up. To him, all of them looked the same. Yeah. But God got all of them name by name. Yeah. yeah. When he called, they were having no talk with the twin. Amen. Yeah. So then he, 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 he took him out. And he showed him, he said, you get the same. Yes, sir. If you can number this, they'll be able to number. All your generation. Yes. But you know, they can't, we can't count the same. Amen. So when we look at this, we miss, we miss great blessings because this is what God is trying to do for Abram is to reshape his mind. Yeah. Yeah. If we could ever reshape the mind of mankind. We can save mankind. Yeah. And we can have a productive church to glorify the great God of heaven. Amen. So when we talk about Abraham's call as well as our call produces blessings, you've got to see the blessings are all in the gracious God of heaven. Yeah. If I had a chance, I'd take you over to Psalm, the eighth division of Psalms, to let you see how excellent is his name. Yeah. But I won't work. It protected custody. When we, we, when we are in Christ Jesus, we have the Lord's protective custody. Yeah. Let me explain this to you. Even though bad things are happening in our lives, yeah. Romans 8, 28, for all things, God can take all things, whether they bad, and make it into good. Y'all yeah. don't hear what I'm saying. Yeah, right. We don't understand how God works. That's because we don't understand God. Yeah. And we don't understand God. We don't take the opportunity to study God so that we can know God and appreciate God the way we truly need to be appreciative of the great God of heaven. But that is also in the God's providential direction. Abram had to go where God directed him to go. That's right. Man. And when you walk in the steps of the Almighty God, God will bless you. Yes, it will. God will bless you, and nobody else can take blessing from you. Man. I said years ago, even when we left Piney Grove, where I grew up, 
wherever God would take me, I'd have no other choice but to go. Yes. Yeah. My wife said then, and she's been saying these 39 years we've been married, I just want to move to Huntsville. Oh, yeah. Now, her, the way she wanted to go was a lot easier than the one I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. She wanted to move to Huntsville. I wanted somebody to move us to Huntsville. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all don't understand. Yeah. 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 I go off into this because, see, it's about really waiting on God yeah. and not trying to do things your own way. Yeah. Abram had to find out that things don't always work out right. the way you think they ought to work out. Yeah. Yeah. We will have some difficult days on this side of life. Yeah. And if you don't understand that we're going to have some difficult days then let me explain something to you. In John 16 and verses number 33, Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me he might have peace. Uh -huh. He said, But in the world he should have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Yes. Lord, what you trying to show me, that if you want to have peace, you better be in me. Uh -huh. If you want to experience peace, you need to be connected to me. Amen. Because in this world, you're going to get beat up. In this world, you're going to get kicked down. In this world, you're going to be left on the road sometime and wondering if anybody can stop or if anybody will come to your aid because this world is just filled with difficult times. Number one, because this world is not our home. And since this world is not our home, the Lord is not going to allow us to just have a hundred percent of sunshine every day. Because if that is so, then we will find ourselves never wanting to leave this side of life. Amen. That's our problem anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're not trying to make heaven our home because we really want to stay on this side of life. The way reason we want to stay on this side of life is because many of us are more comfortable on this side of life and the experience of good things on this side of life. We don't see what the Lord has prepared for us. But we hear Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Yeah. In my Father's house of many yeah. men. If it were not so, I would have told you. Now I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, y'all already know this. I just like to have some fun on that. But see, we miss out on the fact that if the Lord is preparing a place for us, yes, sir. why is it that we don't want to go to that prepared place? Yes. We tell people that heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Yes, so are we really preparing ourselves to make heaven our home? Yes, sir. Are we, are, do we truly desire to leave this place, uh -huh. to go to that place, yes, sir. that where we can be with the Lord forever, yes. are we just so comfortable that I just want to stay right here on this side of life? I told you that Abram was having a, 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 a there was a famine in the land. Yeah. He found himself in this famine and he had to go down into Egypt. But what I did tell you is this, this. God was the one that sustained Abram and his family. Uh -huh. yeah. And what I mean sustained him is he took care of him. Yeah. He took him in now, he didn't have anything but just did. And while he got that, he got more things. Because he went there and God opened the door for him. Yeah. I guess I might, you know, get to you this before, before some of you say, well, he didn't preach. He didn't preach. Yeah, I'm preaching. That's just not where y'all want me to be. No, it's not. When you look at this over in Genesis 12, it says, and when the princes of the Pharaoh saw her, they praised her. And Pharaoh and the woman had taken, uh, the women had taken Pharaoh's house. And for her sake, he dealt with her with Abel. And he gave sheep, oxen, donkeys, servants, female servants, mm -hmm. and uh, female donkeys, and camels. Uh -huh. so he didn't have it when he went down. That's right. <laughs> what did he get? While he was down. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he not only did he get it, yeah. who else got it? Yeah, yeah Sarah got it. Yeah. Sarah got it. But I told you, when you are connected with someone that's being blessed, yeah. Abram is being blessed. Wow. Abram, why 
wife is being blessed. Yeah. Yeah. But Abram's nephew, uh -huh. Lot, yeah. is being blessed. Uh -huh. So when Lot is being blessed, uh -huh. and Abram is blessed, yeah. you look at them and you see that in Genesis 13, yeah. they are so great blessings that their cattle yeah. is eating up everything. Go ahead. Abram said, it's yeah. not good for us to be together. Come on. So we need to separate and go in different directions. Yeah. Let me stop. Come here. How all of a sudden yeah. you didn't have what you have <laughs> and now you have many and yeah. much. Yeah. Let me go on and say how Mississippi folks would say. Yeah. <laughs> we got a lot. Yeah. Yeah, we got a whole lot. Yeah. We got so much that we don't know what we do doing with. Yeah. <laughs> you know, only thing we can do is let the Lord help us to do something. Yeah. Yeah. But the herd people begin to argue with one another. Yeah. Abram said, we be brothers. Why are we carrying on like this? Yeah. I'm so glad somebody got some sin. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody needs to have some sin. Yeah. Yeah. Not everybody has sin. Uh -huh. No. <laughs> 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 That's right, praise. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because we're going to act like everybody up here got yeah. 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 That don't happen. Let, let an obstacle come uh, forth up yeah. yeah. You'll see the real person. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see the real person. Uh -huh. And that real person will actually you say, Ooh, Lord Jesus. Uh -huh. yeah. Lot. Abraham's nephew traveled with Abraham uh -huh. and he's blessed. He's blessed beyond measure. And since he's blessed beyond measure, and they have so much, they have to end up seeing themselves go into different directions. Oh, I'm trying to show you what the call will do for you, church. When you obey the gospel, and people see that you are a change individual, yeah. that you're striving to do what God will have you to do. Mm -hmm. You're not carrying on the foolishness that you used to carry on. That's right. yeah. You're not even going to the places that you used All right, to go. Yeah. Yeah. You understand that you know God will want you to live a different life mm -hmm. and you're striving hard to live a different life. People see you and want to know what made that big change. Right. That's, right. That's why I tell you, we got to save folks where they are. Can I ask you something this morning? You be willing to tell me the truth. You know, and, and I normally don't tell people to just go on and raise their hand. But I think I might need to get people to raise their hand here this morning because I want to ask when was the last time you told a lie? <laughs> <laughs> was it this morning? <laughs> was it yesterday? Yeah. Chances are, since she's been up a while this morning, <laughs> 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 call me one. A lot of three nines say we shouldn't lie one to the other, right? <laughs> Your wife walked in and she said, How do I look, baby? <laughs> 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 you know that if you had said, baby, that one don't look right on me. Right. Then especially if that's the one that she really want to wear. Yeah. You know that's going to create an obstacle, right? right. Yeah. So what did you do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to put it out there just like that. But somebody went on and said, I'm going to say this. <laughs> but the Lord sees it all. The Lord sees it all. When the Lord sees it all, why are we having a problem with just simply being honest? Because we know if we just, 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 just be honest with her, she, she, she may, may not cook me that dinner today. Or <laughs> uh, she may ride with me. Up here, and, and, and you ever been in the car and nobody's saying nothing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Families seek peace Amen. and unity. Yes. But families allow possessions to produce problems. Yes, sir. 
People do not always know how, how to handle possessions. Uh -huh. And when you don't know how to handle possessions, you know that you're going to have some problems. And when you have these problems, you've got to come to the reality that these problems can create more problems, and I don't need a whole lot of problems. Amen. But we got a whole lot of problems. Yeah. Listen, I want to be honest. We have a lot of problems. Yes. I don't want to stay right here in Genesis 13. I need to get over here to where I need to get to. Because I don't want the elders to say he hadn't preached today. <laughs> and if he hadn't preached today, then he came up for this or that. Let me tell you something. The call will bless you. And if you understand that the call can and will bless you, yes. it's about really seeing the call within God's word. Yes, and right. if you take the time to just open up the book and see where it is written in the book, then you can show others where it is written in the book so that they can be blessed, so that you can help them to see what God would have them to see. And if you don't understand how to take the opportunity to just open up the book. Because the book will always lead you in the right direction. Uh -huh. Psalm 33 uh -huh. and verses number 4. The Bible said for the word of the Lord is right. And if the word of God is right. That's where I need to stay. Uh -huh. And all of his works are done in truth. So in 1 Peter chapter 2. Beginning at verses number 8. The Bible says. And a stone of stumbling. And a rock of hopping. Even to them which stumble at the word. Being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But you are chosen generation. Yeah. A royal priesthood. Yeah. A holy nation. Yeah. A peculiar people. Yeah. That you should show forth the praises of him who had what? Called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. But I like this right here. He says, which in times past were not a people. Right. But now are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Amen. Do you see where you've got to be? You need to be in Christ. You need to be able to hear the call, receive the call. How many of us have heard the gospel call? You saw that when Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, was the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein it is written, for the just shall live by faith. Understanding that we need to walk by faith yes, and not by sight. Yes, understanding that we need to give honor and glory to God and understand the, the, the purpose of coming out of the world. Jesus tells Nicodemus, except the man be born again, he cannot inherit the eternal life. Amen. Except the man be washed mm -hmm. in the blood mm -hmm. and in the water, right. he cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He said, marvel not that I say that a man must be born again. Mm -hmm. How many times do you hear that? If you have not obeyed Amen. the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, How many times have we heard the preacher say, life is only a baby. Yes, sir. That appeared for a little time. Yeah. And then it vanishes away. Uh -huh. How many times have you heard the preacher say, the only time we have is right now? Yes. Tomorrow is not promised to you. No, the time is right now. Yes, sir. How many times have you been that close uh -huh. of obeying the gospel, yeah. but you allowed the devil to hold you back right. yeah. just a little bit longer? Right. You say the next time. The next time, the next time, the next time, right. the next time. How long have you been in time you think the Lord is going to give you a next time? Right. I mean, come on now. Right. How many times do you give that man an act right? Okay, how many times do you give that woman an act right? Lord Jesus, somebody help me right there. <laughs> so if we see that, how come we can't see the fact that every time of the next time with the Lord. That somewhere the Lord's long suffering is going to run out. Amen. So when we hear Paul said for his men, been baptized into Christ, 
Yes, sir. I put on Christ. Amen. We need to make sure that we put Christ on. Amen. We look at Ephesians 1 and verses number 3, where all spiritual blessings yes, sir. are in yes, sir. Christ. If we know all spiritual blessings are in Christ, then why is it that I'm not in Christ? Amen. Well, you know, I come over there to the church building. But you need to be in Christ. Amen. I love to sing the song, but you need to be in Christ. I love what they do with our children, but you still need to be in Christ. I know you're not perfect. Everybody in here know you're not perfect. Amen. Because we're not perfect. Amen. That was my emphasis this morning. God knew that Abram was not perfect. Amen. Can I tell you something in this lesson I've been going to tell you? He lied. <laughs> and told them yeah. that Sarah was his sister. Yeah. Guess what God did anyway? Yeah. Bless him. Woo, no fool.
sometimes yeah. goes against the very nature yeah. of God's teaching. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We don't always we in Walmart and we walking down the aisle and, and we see something we go. Mm. That's
Yes. yes, sir. Stop acting like we're not bad. A young person want to know how is it that you and your Christianity is far along the night. Yeah. So let's help one another. Amen. Amen. Let's have conversations with one another. Yeah. Yeah. Let's really reach out to one another. Yes, sir. Yes. And have honest conversations. Mm -hmm. Now, what you saw up there, that's me every day. Amen. Because I'm not perfect. Amen. Amen. And I don't even let nobody tell nobody that the Lord perfect. Amen. Because sometimes, Brother Rogers will tell Sister Rogers, shh. <laughs> then I go, shh. And I go, baby, please, <laughs> leave this to me. Yeah. Then I have to go, girl, be quiet. <laughs> yeah. Let me handle this. Now, I don't mind telling you, every nine minutes, I had to get past to be quiet. Girl, shut up. <laughs> Let me have this. You can have the house. But right here, I need to be able to take care of this. They don't need to see us being foolish. Now, folks do know. Yeah. Well, Sister Rogers is a strong woman. <laughs> well, if I knew she was going to act like my grandmother, <laughs> I'd have left her down there with her mom and dad. <laughs> but I did not know. I didn't know. That one morning, I mean, the whole time we were dating, she was so sweet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know what the time is. I'm going to tell you this and I'm coming out. We attended the same church, same congregation. I used to write letters and send it to her. I said, girl, I like you. <laughs> you like me? <laughs> she said, no. <laughs> so one day, I wrote one and said, girl, I love you. Did you love me? No. <laughs> I'm going to fix this because I'm blocked. I'm calling her. I called her sister Liz, answered the phone. I said, I want to speak to Karen. She said, Patrick, is this you? I said, yeah. You want me to tell her? I said, yeah. yeah. She told her who was on the phone. When she got to the phone, they said, click. <laughs> 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 this is a lesson to our young people. Don't give up. <laughs> Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Uh, I showed up at church for a gospel meeting. Didn't even get out of the car. Uh -huh. She came to the car. Got in the car. And won't get out of the car. <laughs> I told her coming back from somewhere, girl, I'm putting you out. You think I'm getting out? You done lost your mind. She ain't going nowhere. That's what God will do for you. But you got to obey the gospel. I told a brother this morning, I grew up in the church. Yeah. But I haven't always been perfect. Amen. Amen. I'm not perfect now. Amen. I, but I find myself doing less things than I used to do. Amen. I find myself, I find myself doing greater things than I used to do. Amen. Because I'm working for the Lord. Amen. I find myself now having conversations with young people and telling them, I can tell you where I was at this age. I can tell you what I did at this age. But I don't need you to make the same mistake. I don't need you to go this, this path. Seek to abide in Christ Jesus. Yes, adults. 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 I only got a few to say and I'm here. Adults. Our young people want to know what you had to go through to remain where you are. To become stronger. Because I'm having a difficult time. Yes. And if we don't take the time to talk to our young people, Amen. we'll lose them Amen. because somebody we yes. have a conversation with yes. and we have our obligation. That's right. Yes. Let me stop. Let me stop. We 
Who tell you to get the Christ? You got to hear the word. Yes, sir. You must believe it. Yes, sir. Repent of your sins. Yeah. Confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Yes. Sir. Go down into the watery grave to come up a new creation uh -huh. yes. in Christ Jesus. Yes. Let me tell you something. Peter said that baptism now does save us. Yeah. It's not the washing away of the filth of the flesh. Mm -hmm. That's right. But it's an answer, good answer to the good conscience of right. God Amen. through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right. When the Lord established the church, yes, sir. there was only one. Yeah. Yes, sir. When the Lord promised the church, there was only one. Amen. Yes, sir. Today, there is only one. Amen. And I know you see all these <coughs> different groups and bodies. But still, there's only one ecclesia. There's only one body of Christ. And now we are fighting one another. If we want to change off of it, the church of Christ and put the house of prayer. But we've got to go over and deal with it. Because Jesus did say it would be called the house of prayer. But I believe it also that it ought to be Wearing the name Christ. Amen. Because it was Jesus that died for me. Yes, yes, and if Jesus purchased it with his own precious blood, yes, then we've got to stand up and tell this, this, these people that's fighting issues that have already been fought with because the Lord has already answered. Amen. Yes, He's already answered. Yes. We just need to go to the book yes, yes. and get the answer. Uh -huh. The answer's already there. Yes. The answer's there, people. The answer's there. Yes. So let me find out. <coughs> How many times have you heard the gospel? And you say, next time, Lord. Next time, Lord. Next time. Okay. So everybody is again a Christian already. I'm glad if that's so. But you know, as a child of God, we have our issues. John said, walk in the light and he's in the light. Yeah. That he has fellowship one with the other. Yeah. And the blood of Jesus continues to cleanse us. But what what he does? He says, now that's seven, that's eight. Verse number nine says, we ought to confess our transgressions. If we confess our transgressions, he's just and he's faithful to forgive us of all of our sins. All he wants you to do it's confess. Yeah. You ain't got to put your business out because let me tell you something. Well, people can't handle your business. <laughs> they can't handle their own business. Yeah. If they can handle their own business, they wouldn't be in somebody else's business. Yeah. So we got to make sure. But all you're doing is asking God. He knows. Because He knows. Yes. I'm talking about literally, He knows. Yes. Yeah. We just need to make it right with Him. Yeah. And then He said, if you say that you have no sin, mm -hmm. And let's stop acting like I don't have the problem that you have. I'm glad you don't have my problem. But that means you can't help me and I can't help you. But you got some issues. So let's find out how we can help one another. Let's find out how we can help one another. I need for you this morning. But come on, get on with me. Oh, this is this is where the devil really stops working. Don't get on people. And if you know that you have not put Christ on, come on, let's get it done today. Let's put Christ on today. Let's literally put the Lord first today. Because it's needful that the Lord is first. We wrestle it. We beating ourselves up. We're beating others up because we're having some issues and we don't know how to handle the issue. I'm so glad that God knows how to handle the issue. I'm so glad that he's long-suffering. I like the fact that Paul says, but God commended his love toward us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That word commend there is introduced. He introduced his love to us. Mm -hmm. While we were still down there shooting crap. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 
while we were still over there trying to sneak in and out of somebody's window. Well, <laughs> God, Jesus. While we were still looking at somebody else's. Oh, you what you say? <laughs> He actually has us. Yeah. And I want you to come to Christ as we stand and sing this song of encouragement. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. You got to be one this morning. symbols and uh, a lot of people wonder why and then we, he, he and I are very similar. We preach in ways in which you can relate to it. Mm -hmm. The reason being is because we're imitating Jesus. Yeah, right. Amen. Not imitate no preacher anywhere and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Imitating how Jesus taught us so that we can understand spiritual things even though we're using uh, everyday things for our life. But also one thing we definitely want to get out of this is that we're not perfect church. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. And when we have that perfectionist attitude, nobody imperfect will want to come in here. Amen. So I'm glad that that was revealed unto us. Of course, we're wishing our brother God speed and his wife for everything that they do. Whether it's here in Gaston or back in Huntsville or wherever God takes them. We, we thank them and ask for God's speed in uh, their stead as well. Uh, also, uh, as, as we mentioned, again, the elders have probably already done this already. But if you're visiting with us, you are certainly our honor guests. And it's interesting because I see so many people from so, uh, around the country here today. Thank you for spending time here with your humble uh, Henry Street family here. Of course, we see Huntsville in attendance here. We see Birmingham in attendance here today. And so we're so grateful that you, you, you brave the highways and byways mm -hmm. to be here with us today. And I'm sure others as well. And see our brother Dan is back. I uh, flew on the airlines back here and got here. Amen. For worship services. Well, I know he's tired. Yeah. But his warmth and his love for God is more important yeah. than getting a little bit more rest. So thank God for delivering him uh, to be here as well. But also, I do always, as you like, I like to do all the time, I like to acknowledge those that also join us on our broadcast, especially when they're, they're from afar. Again, we've got to realize that in some places, we're 12 hours behind people. And so they're way ahead of us in time. So they're taking out time to be with us. Yeah. And we thank you for that. And, uh, typically that we have, we have Nigeria, Ghana, Liberia, Kenya, Uganda, Malawi, Zambia, Ethiopia, Cameroon, Zimbabwe, uh, India, Pakistan, the Philippines, Bangladesh, Indonesia, uh, Papua New Guinea, Colombia, Ukraine, United Kingdom, Germany, Australia, and New Zealand that we know of this time. So if you're on our broadcast and you're from afar, acknowledge where you're from and we'll acknowledge you as well. Yeah. But most of all, uh, the most important part is that God calls, right? Jesus did say, come unto me, all you got to live. 
and a heavy laden, I will give you rest. Yes, sir. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. There's no better Savior to serve than Jesus, yeah. who's gentle, loving, and you realize from a further revelation of the word that we just got that he'll work with you uh -huh. yes. as long as you're working with him. So I'd say that to say this. You cannot fix yourself before you come to Christ. This is not going to work. You've got to be in Christ in order for God to work with you. So we're going to, uh, all, as we always do, take a moment. And we have some prayer requests that have been given unto us. And we're going to pray uh, together as well. Uh, and if you have changed your mind, in other words, you have been moved to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, you're, we'll take your confession here if you're walking out in the parking lot. And you come on back here, we'll take your confession. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. It doesn't matter because God is in the saving business. Amen. 24 hours, 7 days a week. You have come to what's in Romans 16, verse 16. It says, salute one another with the holy kiss. The church of Christ salute to you. You, amen. I don't know anywhere in the Bible where it was inconvenient for somebody to become a Christian. And the leadership didn't accommodate it. Amen. Amen. As I know in Acts chapter number 8, uh, Philip was taken from what he was doing. The Bible said that God spoke to him in them days. And told him to go get in a chariot. Now, he wasn't anticipating getting nobody's chariot. He was going by his own, uh, his own agenda that day. But God changed. He had to change his plans right then and there. Amen, y'all. So you don't go by what they do in the world today. Got to wait for the first Sunday, second Sunday, all that kind of nonsense. Uh -uh. It's not about being convenient for us. It's about being convenient for you Amen. to obey the gospel anytime your heart is moved. Again, we have to obey the Bible precedence. Next eight will take your confession that you believe. You have to confirm that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then we'll go right down in this one behind us immediately. Well, you'll be baptized for forgiveness of your sins. Yes, and the salvation of your soul right here, right now, can change your life, not just now, but forever. Yes, because we are turn, talking about eternity. Yes. Again, I don't want to take you down because I know that you feel good by the things that you've said, and that has been said. But remember, it has been quoted from the scriptures. Life is like a vapor. Yes. It's just here one moment, and then it's gone the next. Yes. See, I've been in the ministry long enough. And this is not me too my horn. I'm trying to show you something. 25 years this year. And I've seen over and over my 25 year tenor of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. People keep saying, next week. Next week. Next time. So forth and so on. And I've seen people literally, because of the time frame I've been doing this, then wait till next week until the next week was their casket. And they never came. Amen. So don't let the devil delay you. Amen. You don't want to procrastinate. The time to be saved is now. So again, if you want to come forward, make sure you do so before we leave this building here today. Again, if you want to, if you get that, that bulletin out there, grab a bulletin behind us in, in that foyer. If me and my wife want to roll back to Birmingham, you say, I want to do it, we turn around. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And we'll come back. And you'll be able to obey the gospel. Of Jesus Christ. With that being said, I do have some requests that were turned in unto me. Let me read these for a moment here. But uh, one request is to pray for Derek and Tammy Woods. Both are in the hospital at University of Alabama, Birmingham. Uh, also, pray for uh, Jayla Baptist. She had a bad uh, car accident and is, and is in ICU. Pray for Juliet Collins, also, who is sick at this time. Let's take a moment to pray. Let's see any other further responses. And from there, we'll uh, turn things back over to the brethren. Shall we take a moment? Dear precious Father, we thank you so dearly for this day. We thank you for Jesus who suffered, died, and rose again, that we may have a chance at eternal life. Father, it is with everything in us that we love you, dear Father. And I believe that time to time, we need to be telling you that we love you. But more than just telling you, we've got to show you, dear Father. Because he said, if we love you, we'll keep your commandments, dear Father. Father God, we ask again that you can move our sins and shortcomings, dear Father. And as the message has been placed on our hearts, let us, let us not just be an amen exercise, Lord, but instead be something we place in our lives, dear Father. That when someone walks into this assembly, any assembly of the Lord's people, that they feel welcome, dear Father. 
they feel that uh, people are not going to have a condescending attitude towards the Lord, that nobody's going to look down on them, but we're all imperfect vessels trying to be more like the perfect vessel, vessel being your, your son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, your Father. Father God, you know the names of our mission. Uh, Jayla Baptist being one, uh, Juliet Collins, still one, dear Lord, and Derek and, and Tammy Woods, dear Father. Uh, all in a situation in which their health is not what they want to be here. We ask, Lord, that you bless them, you help them, you deliver them, and that they look to you as a source of health and strength uh, throughout uh, this ordeal, dear Father. Father God, as we progress through the service, Lord, that everything be done, please accept for your sight. And also, Lord, uh, throughout this week, if God be allow us to see the next day, dear Father, that the word that goes out will be preached boldly, dear Father. You'll keep uh, uh, Brother and Sister Rogers in good health, dear Father. Yeah. Uh, continue to bless Brother Rogers with the word that you want to uh, be conveyed unto all of us, dear Father. And Lord, that the gospel meeting that's coming throughout this week, that it will yield fruit unto you, dear Father. And of course, we know that the word of God does not go out, go out void at all. So whatever happens, dear Father, us being restored, us being strengthened, us being uh, comforted, people obeying the gospel, Lord, Ahead of time, Lord, we say thank you for all those things. It's in Christ Jesus' name we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Again, as always, pray for us and pray for you. The brothers will continue to serve us. God bless you. This time is uh, time to give back to the Lord a portion of what He's blessed us with and financial blessing. First Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. The Apostle Paul wrote, Now concerning collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye upon the first day of the week. Let every one of you lay by him in store of God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when it comes. And if you have uh, an offering to submit, please raise your hand. Raise your hand if you have an offering you want to give. We don't want to overlook you anymore. Careful, and I don't pass the brother sister back. <laughs> now let us give thanks. The eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bow this time just acknowledging your greatness, just thanking you for all the many blessings that you <clears throat> so richly shower upon us. We thank you, Father, at this time, especially for the financial blessings. We pray, Father, that you would help us all be, be willing to give back to you a portion of what we've been blessed with. Help us to be a blessing to someone who's in need. And we just pray that this offering this morning be used in a wisest amount of possible and help build and help your kingdom. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Before Jesus suffered the agony of Gethsemane and the cruel pain of the cross, he administered a supper to his disciples. As we partake of the Lord's Supper, which commemorates his sacrifice, let us meditate and reflect upon the suffering and the great sacrifice of the Lord for all who matter upon the cross. The Apostle Paul wrote, it is recorded in the first book of Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he betrayed, took great. When he had given thanks, he prayed and his sin. Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us pray. The eternal God of heaven, Father, we just thank you for all that you've done for us. We, we thank you for Jesus Christ, your son, who came and died on the Calvary's cross in order that we might have eternal life. And Father, we're so grateful for that sacrifice. And Father, we ask that you can bless his bread that we're about to take up and represent that son and father. We pray that we'll do so in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable unto you. In the son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you need to pack it, please raise your hand. We had communion packets in the foyer that you came into the building. If you didn't receive one back there, but you, if you need one now, please raise your hand. And after the same man also he took the cup. When he supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever sheep this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Let us pray. You turn God our Heavenly Father, we come again just thanking you for all the many blessings that you so richly shall upon us. We thank you, Father, most of all, Lord, for Jesus Christ, your Son, who shed his blood on Calvary's cross in order that we might have eternal life. And Father, we just ask that as we partake of this fruit of vine, which represents the Son's blood, we will do so in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable unto you. In your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First of, all, first of all, we just want to uh, thank each of you for being here today. It certainly is always our pleasure to have visitors in the assembly. And uh, if you're in the area, if you just live in this area, and just not, uh, just not a member of the Lord's Church, please come back and be with us again. And we just ask that you bring someone with you. And we uh, want to thank Brother Lord Rogers for the messages. He did, yeah, yeah, yeah. did an outstanding job, I think. And he did. He was a... Uh, I've concluded that he's a courageous man, you know. The yeah. way well, he, well, he spoke about his wife this morning. So he had to have courage. Well, of course, if his wife is not with him when he comes back tomorrow night, that's, that, that's nobody's business. <laughs> uh, we're just glad to, uh, for him to come and be with us this time. All right, at this time. Well... Remember now that gospel meeting is running through Thursday. It starts at seven o'clock each night, Monday through Monday through Thursday. Uh,
do have a visitor, visitor star, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Star and McDonald. You know, we're glad to have you all here today. Amen. Amen. So they're from the Woodland Park Church. Amen. We have some other here from various other congregations as well. You know, as long as you, you know, oftentimes we don't consider people visitors as long as they're a member of the church. <laughs> Always at home. So you're at home today. Amen. So, uh, we appreciate you coming. And uh, as well as everyone else who's uh, here is not a member of this congregation. We thank you. And remember, the, somebody pointed to it. To, to, uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I all right, we're glad to have you today, uh, and we are certainly ask that you come and be with us again. <coughs> also, I see the Anderson sitting, sitting yeah. behind there from Piedmont. Amen. So Anderson there used to work at the same place I work at. So far, I've known him for quite some time. Amen. 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 Stand for the closing hymn and benediction, please. Yeah. Uh